welcome back to the GNG channel. Today we have an awesome new pattern for you because everyone needs more woven patterns in their life. Today we have the umbrella skirt. <laughs> I originally designed this skirt because Joann's has some really cute prints out for Halloween, but you could definitely wear this skirt in all seasons. It has this awesome slash design, but also the lines of the skirt kind of give it a little bit of a vintage-y feel. The cool thing about this pattern is it is drafted inch by inch. So whatever your waist measures, that's the size you make. If you want it to sit around your natural waist, you measure around your natural waist. If you want it to sit lower at your hips, that's where you measure. So whatever your measurement is, cut all the lines out right at that measurement. And you get the perfect fit every time. This pattern has layers, it has shortened and lengthened lines, and it's one of those pieces that look harder than it really is to sew. This skirt does have a zipper. Ah! Zippers sometimes scare people, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So stick around for the rest of the video. There's a code hidden somewhere that makes the pattern 50% off. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first is we're going to cut out this pattern. In this tutorial, the black fabric will be the top portion of the skirt, and then I'm using a print for the bottom portion. So if your print or your fabric is non-directional, as in it doesn't matter which way you cut it, if you're new to sewing and don't understand directional print, I grabbed a few examples to show you. This print would be a directional print because you can only cut it one way for the hearts to be right side up. Like you couldn't cut it this way, otherwise all the hearts would be upside down. This is a non-directional print because this is what we called a tossed print. You can cut it any way and the characters will still be right side up. Solids would be non-directional, polka dots, plaid, anything that you can cut upside down or right side up is non-directional. Any type of directional print that you have to cut it a certain way, you are gonna need more fabric for because it's not as versatile while cutting. So for the top piece, you can cut it like this with the fabric folded over so you'll get two pieces when you cut this one. And then if it's not directional, you can turn it this way and cut along the same line that you did on the first cut. And you can get, if you alternate back and forth, you can get three or four, or I don't know, in some of the smaller sizes, whoops, you can get maybe five across here. So if it's non-directional, you can get a lot out of one yard or two yards of fabric. But if it is directional and you're going to have to fussy cut, you are going to need more fabric for each piece. So for this top piece, we're going to cut 12. This panel fabric I'm going to use for the bottom pieces of my skirt. So I will have to fussy cut these pieces like this. So you will need a lot more fabric if you're doing it this way, but it does give a really cool effect to the slices in the skirt. So this is the bottom piece of the skirt and you will also cut 12 of these as well. So to cut the waistband, we're just going to place the piece on the fold of the fabric like this and you're gonna do two of those with the fabric. And then I also suggest adding um, some fusible interfacing to the waistband just because the skirt can get a little heavy with all of the fabric that's in it. Today I'm using this 931TD. It's a Pellin um, interfacing and it's fusible so it has the little bumps on it that you're going to press onto your waistband and you're going to cut two of these as well. I just want to clarify that the fusible interfacing is optional, but it does give it a cleaner look. It just makes the waistband sturdier for all of that skirt. So here are your pieces all cut out. You'll have 12 skirt tops, 12 skirt bottoms, and um, two waistband pieces. And this is optional, but they'll have two interfacing pieces as well. Okay, for the first step of construction, we're going to take one top piece and one bottom piece and we're going to lay them out like this so you can tell which slash 
goes which way. Then you're going to flip over the bottom piece so that it lines up right sides together with the top piece. And you're going to start one inch from the top. You can see how there's like a flat edge on the top of the top piece. And you're gonna line it up all the way to the bottom. And it will end up one inch from this piece as well. This is so at the end, whenever we hem the skirt, there will be a point. These um, top pieces will end up at a point at the end because there's a one inch hem allowance. So you're going to sew all the way up this edge and then we're going to press that seam. So after you've sewn that edge, you will press the seam allowance to one way or the other, it does not matter which. This one I'm going to press it towards the top piece all the way down. And now your first piece is finished. Finishing all of your seams and pressing them is super important. It's probably the most overlooked step in sewing, but to give your finished garment a nice clean finish, you pretty much have to press every seam that you sew with woven. Um, we will worry about top stitching later if you choose to do that. It is going to look a little funny with this one inch hanging down over here and one inch up here. But I promise in the end, it will all look really, really good. So you're going to do this 11 more times with the other 11 top pieces and the other 11 bottom pieces. Now that you have all of your um, pairs sewed together, you'll have 12 of these top and bottom pairs. We're going to start sewing the pairs together in one long strip. So you'll take um, one here and you're going to fold this one over so that right sides are together. Again, you're going to start one inch from this top of the top piece and all the way along here. And it will stop one inch from here. And you will sew these sections together, these one inch sections up here and one inch sections up here, just so that there's a straight line when we go to gather at the top. And like I said before, so that there's um, enough at the hem when we hem it that you will still see this point on the top piece. And you'll just keep doing that until all 12 strips are sewn together. Okay, so now that all of your panels are sewn together, you will get this really long skirt. And um, you need to make sure that you do press your seams the same way that we did earlier. If you're choosing to top stitch, you can go ahead and do that now. It doesn't matter which way you top stitch. If you top stitch on this fabric or the solid fabric, just make sure that it's the same all the way through the skirt. Um, now we are going to gather the top portion of the skirt all the way along there. Um, you will notice that there is a slight curve to the skirt and that is on purpose. That is why the bottom edges of the bottom piece are curved so that it will be more like a half circle skirt whenever we're wearing it. Like it'll be a gathered skirt, but it'll be um, more round than it is straight. Okay, so now your skirt is gathered at the top. If you are new to sewing and you need to learn how to gather, what I typically do is just run a long basting stitch, which is um, usually set at a four, just a straight stitch, and then you pull the bobbin thread until your fabric starts to gather. If you would like to see um, a quick way how to gather, I have one in my baddie tutorial video that I will link in the description and you can check that out. You will need to gather this um, twice as long as your unfolded waistband piece. So if you grab a waistband piece and lay it out, you will need to gather it twice this length because there are two waistband pieces. And then we're going to set the skirt aside for now and work on the waistband really quick. 
Now we're going to press our uh, fusible interfacing to our waistband. So lay one waistband piece down and then put one of the interfacing pieces on top. Make sure that the bubble side is facing your fabric. Super important tip I forgot to mention. Make sure you are fusing your interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric. And then you're just going to press it down for about, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds um, in each section. Just keep moving it down. You just wanna make sure that the bubbles are melting to the waistband and fusing it together. And you're going to do this on um, both waistband pieces until everything is nice and secure on the waistband. Okay, so now that we have our interfacing on our waistband, um, we are going to cut one of the waistband pieces in half. And these will um, be the back pieces, the short ones. And this long one will act as the front piece. So we're going to take the back pieces and lay them right sides together with the front piece, like so. And then we're going to sew down both short sides and then we're going to press those seams open. Okay, so now that we have our waistband sewn together, we are going to fold up the waistband in half <clears throat> and then we're going to baste all along this long edge just so that it stays in place when we go to add the skirt. Okay, now that our waistband is basted together and we have to make sure that our skirt is gathered to the length of the waistband and we're just going to place the waistband along the top of the skirt, right sides together and we're going to go ahead and sew along the top, attaching the gathered skirt to the waistband. Now, I, whenever I sew gathering to um, another piece of the pattern, I always use my sewing machine first just to make sure to get those gathers nice and even, and then I'll finish it off with a serger just because sometimes the sergers can eat through these little gathering threads and then they all start coming apart. So to remedy that, I just use my sewing machine first and then I serge it finished. Okay, so now your waistband is attached and we need to have a celebration because once all of your pattern pieces are together, that's always a good sign that we are on the right track and we're almost finished. I did go ahead and top stitch the waistband and caught the seam allowance underneath just to give it more of a finished look. So that's totally optional. I've seen people who stitch along the top too just to make it look um, uniform across the waistband. And yeah, that's what it should look like now. And all we have left to do is add the zipper and hem it up. Uh, before we get started with the zipper, I just want to mention you do not have to install your zipper this way. If you're more comfortable doing a lapped zipper with that hook and eye at the top, definitely go with what you're comfortable with. Is my way technically the correct way? Probably not, but it's definitely the easiest, fastest way for me to do it. I don't have any issues with it coming unzipped. I haven't heard anything from the testers about having issues. The most important thing is just to do it the way you want to do it. When adding a zipper, um, the first thing you need to do is you need to finish the edge of your skirt on both sides, starting up here at the waistband and going all the way the length of this bottom piece. And you're going to do that over here as well. So there's a nice and even edge to work with. Um, if you don't have a serger, you can always just run a zigzag stitch along the edge of the fabric as well. Okay, so grab your zipper. This one is just a regular polyester 12 inch zipper. And there are instructions on the back just in case you can only find an 18 inch zipper and you want it to be a 12 inch. Or if you have a 12 inch zipper and only want to use an eight inch, 
Um, it doesn't really matter on this skirt how long your zipper is. You could make it zip all the way down the bottom. It's really up to you. Okay, so when I add a zipper, I always start with my zipper pull facing down. So you wanna flip it around so that the pull of the zipper is facing the skirt. And I'm gonna start with that zipper pull right at the top of the skirt waistband. And I'm going to pin all along the edge here. And I am gonna use actual pins this time instead of clips because you'll notice in my other videos I use clips a lot. But when doing a zipper, I like to use pins just because I know these won't slip out of place. So I will just pin this all along the edge and you can butt that edge of the zipper right up next to the edge of your finishing. So now that I have my zipper pinned into place, I pinned it all the way down to the zipper stop down here. And we're just going to sew. I usually start like an inch below the zipper pull because I'll finish that later when we finish this part off. But um, I'll start an inch down here and I will sew as close as I can to the zipper teeth without sewing into the teeth themselves. And I use a zipper foot. Those are pretty common to be um, included with a sewing machine. If you do not have a zipper foot, then you can order those online and they're usually pretty universal for all sewing machines. So I'm going to go do that now and I'm gonna use white thread so you can see right where I sewed. Okay, so now you can see that my zipper is sewn into place. It's stitched really close to the teeth. So when you turn it around, this is what your zipper will look like on the one side of your skirt. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with the other side of the skirt. You're just going to place the zipper along this edge kind of like right sides together so the zipper pull is still on that back side here. And you're going to pin that along this edge and do the exact same thing. Okay, before um, we tackle the top part of our zipper, first we're going to finish off the bottom of the skirt to where it's not sewn down here. We're going to put that right sides together to the bottom of the skirt and we're going to sew that together and finish that off all the way to the hem okay so now we're going to turn our skirt right sides out and you'll see that the top portion of the zipper is definitely not finished so what we're going to do is work on one side at a time i'm just going to unzip this a little bit so we can um, have more room to maneuver this um, tab at the top. So since this side is already folded over because of the stitching that we just did, we are going to take this little tab and we are going to fold it over and stick it right in that fold. That way that's folded down and everything is enclosed. And then we're going to pin that tab into place so that it stays where it needs to be. Hopefully you all saw that. I'll do it again on the other side. But in the end, we will just top stitch this an eighth of an inch away from the zipper and that will give the zipper a finished look and it will also accomplish keeping that tab in between the two layers of fabric. So I'm gonna uh, show you again on this side. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Okay, so this section, let me turn it right side out. It has um, a fold in it already from the stitching that we did. So we're just going to take this tab from the zipper, fold it down in between those two layers, and we're gonna pin it in place. 
and then we're gonna top stitch that side too all the way down the zipper and I don't think there's anything wrong with just cutting that off but I think for it to be finished correctly it has to be folded in and stitched into place so I'm gonna do that really quick and then all we have left to do is hem and now our zipper is top stitched and finished and it is fully functional okay for hemming there's a couple of options that you can do there is a one inch hem allowance so um, if you wanted to just do a rolled hem on your serger make sure you're taking a full one inch off because you want this point from the top piece if you can see that this point is going to be the end of the skirt so that all of these panels are even and the point is still intact so you could do a rolled hem which is easiest on a serger but um, if you wanted to just hem it regularly you can fold it over a half an inch and fold it over another half an inch and then you will see that the point it is going to be a little bit let's see if you do that then there the, you will still see the point it's almost to the end and that will look nice along the bottom so that the full length of this panel is included in the hem so um, either way that you want to do it it'll turn out just fine as long as you take one inch off so you're going to do that and then you're going to sew like fold one half an inch and then fold another half of an inch and then you're going to sew an eighth of an inch away from this top fold all the way around the skirt and then you are finished i know sometimes it's hard to go from knit to woven but i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and sewing along today make sure you check out our halloween hack video it's full of tips tricks modifications for this skirt how to add pockets different ways to hem to make your skirt fuller and we talk about other designs that you can wear with the skirt styling tips included so now that you've seen the tutorial, you can head over to the site. The listing is linked in the description and you can use code umbrella 50. That code will discount the pattern 50%. I've had a lot of fun making these video tutorials lately. I think it's just a cool balance for customers who prefer instructions one way or the other. Thank you for tuning in to G&G &G today. If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and as always, follow us on all of our social media that's linked in the description too. Now head over to the Halloween video and I'll see you next time. Bye.